What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, I'm gonna be talking about getting MongoDB set up on your local machine so that you can have a test environment in order to play around with it and learn all of the functionality. And there's a million different ways to do this, but I'm going to teach you the easiest and the most flexible way to get MongoDB set up. And I've installed countless different, or I've done countless countless different ways of getting this set up and the easiest way is to set up a free cluster on mongodb.com and install 3t now 3t with mongodb people are very picky and kind of opinionated about what type of client to use so in mongodb you will have the database out in the cloud the cloud or the mongo server is not going to actually exist on your machine similar to what you would have in sql server with mongodb the tooling is world class in mongodb itself which is even crazier like it's such a crazy thing that they do this is that you could uh, spin up I, I literally just spun up a mongodb database a hundred percent free and i'll show you how to spin up the database first all you want to do is you want to go to cloud.mongodb.com sign up for an account it's really easy to do then go over here and click create set up your password set up your username it, like i said it's super super easy to do and what's going to happen is just kind of like what happened on screen there it's going to split spin up what's called a cluster and you will have a cluster set up on your machine the next thing that you want to do is you want to we want to set up some test data and what you do is you right click on here you go to load sample data set just click right there and you will have the exact same data that I'm going to have for this MongoDB database. And we will be working with the exact same data so you can follow along with me. The second thing that you need to do is you need to install what's called a client. A client is not 100%. It is necessary to have something like a terminal. But we're going to take it a step further and we're actually going to install a really nice GUI. I recommend 3T if you are going to work with this extensively. If you're planning on using MongoDB extensively, go ahead and buy uh, 3T. But there, are, but there also is Compass. Compass is the piece of software that MongoDB actually creates, and it's free. But I don't recommend it because the uh, command line on it it just isn't. It's it's a lot slower. 3T is lightning fast, and I also like it too because you can turn your you can turn Mongo you can turn SQL commands into Mongo commands. And if you're somebody who's already familiar with SQL Server, like I am, like a boomer coder, like I'm an old school boomer coder, just kidding. You you want to have that feature, and also super lightning fast access to the shell. You could even go more old like hacker you know old school terminal like if you're like somebody who's like die hard you know you have to use git in the terminal and you're you know you just love the terminal then you would want to st install mongosh and mongosh will give you all of that functionality as well too but i highly recommend 3t and there's really no secret to installing 3t you just kind of uh install it pick pick which platform you're running on install it and then you're good to go so now that we have that set up, where do we go from here? The next thing that we need to do is we need to actually connect it. And you want to add your current IP. I would not recommend a lot. You could. I, I think in this case, it really doesn't matter. But I'm just going to go ahead with add the current IP address because it does add an extra, you know, nice layer of security. And then we'll go ahead and we will choose a connection. So what you are going to want to do is you want to go back or i probably clicked on that too fast you can connect with the mongodb shell you could go this way you could uh quickly just set it up with mongosh like the term like whenever you hear the word mongosh just think terminal you could connect it to your application they will give you a sql server string and then you can connect with this, which is what we want. We want to connect with MongoDB Compass, but we're not gonna connect with MongoDB Compass. We're going to connect with Studio 3T. So what you're gonna do, gonna go up here, and would you look at that? 
Studio 3T has already connected, detected a connection string. We don't even need to paste that in there. So there we go. Um, connection group. None of this really even matters right now. The only thing that is going to matter is you want to input your password. And I already went ahead and set up my password. So here we go. And we're going to authenticate with admin. Let me go ahead and test this. And I hope it works. Looks like everything is working. Okay, great, we are connected. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna save this. And this is this is the one that I had previously before, and this is just another test one, but this is the one that we want right here. And you can actually name it. A good thing to do is to just come up here and just be like, test DB and save. Then we're gonna go ahead and connect. Fingers crossed that it actually connects. It's always dicey getting the database set up for the first time because sometimes it can actually mess up. So we will see here. Oh, it is currently loading. It's trying to load this data set. That's probably what's going on. Okay, so if you look here, we have all of our, we have some samples here and it's actually creating it on the fly. I probably should have maybe given it a little bit of time, but by the time that this video is done, it will probably be good to go. So it doesn't matter anyway. But so when you look, just to kind of give you a, uh, like a crash course on 3T, I'm just gonna give you like a, a quick crash course on 3T. Whenever I log into 3T, first thing that I do is I'm always just like, boom, I just click my recent connections and 90% of my time is spent over here. And I'll just try to come in here and just give you a couple little gotchas too. Um, if you are coming from SQL Server world, if you are coming from the land of SQL Server, you will notice that when you click on these and you have these collections, you're going to be like, well, what? Like, I don't see any tables. There's no tables here, Teddy. All I see is an ID. That is the nature of a schemaless um, database. Uh, if you click here, what you want to do is you want to click, and what it's going to do is it's actually going to spin up a query. So if you look here, we have our Mongo shell, and the best thing to do, I think, is just like come in here and uh, actually click on the collection. And what it's going to do is it's going to run a very quick find. And this is very similar to SQL Server. You can come in here. You can go to table view. I think it's always good. I, as I, I've probably said this like a, million, a trillion times already, is that I like this because it, uh, it looks like SQL Server and it looks like what I'm already used to. Um, another thing is that you want to be able to quickly spin up a shell. So this if whenever you get confused or whenever you're just like, I just want to like type in some SQL, uh, some, you know, Mongo queries. Like I, do, I don't want to like use the actual GUI. Like I want to use a query. Just remember that you want to just come up here and click that IntelliShell, that, uh, IntelliShell, IntelliShell. And that's, what's going to give you just a very quick way to have a nice little collection. So you can just come up here and, you know, start, start pasting in commands just like this. And then, that's pretty much it. That's like 99% of my, you know, day is just this and there's really not much else. Sometimes I use the SQL uh, query, but not a tremendous amount. It's only one off things. And that's something too, that I will show you guys down the line. But next thing that we're going to start working on is uh, talk, start talking about BSON and JSON. And we're also going to start working on CRUD commands. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.